VoiceThread, Digo, and Glogster for providing the door prizes this year. Um, okay, so that's just another reminder about CEUs if anyone just joined us, but I think everybody, oh, maybe Laura and Irene, welcome. Um, just so you know, make sure that you're signed in with your full name. It looks like you both are um, so that you can receive your CEUs and also that you um, are going to stay for the entire uh, session. So, um, okay, and the last note is um, because of the size of the conference, we would like you to use the chat room to ask questions rather than the microphone. Um, so you can see that there are some polling tools below your name, and I think if I go to the next slide, yep, you can see um, this looks kind of just like it would look on your, uh, let me put a little magic wand tool right there. Um, there's some tools like the smiley face and the green check and the red X, and we'll be probably using those throughout the presentation, so just take note of those. It's pretty easy. Just click on them to um, vote or do whatever you need to do. Um, okay, and our next slide, I'm going to have you see if you can use one of these tools, actually, the magic wand to place where you are on the map right now as you're participating in our session. So I am in Ann Arbor, so I'm going to go ahead and put one there. And if you can, yep, perfect. Great. So we have some people in Michigan and um, someone in Chicago, it looks like. I'll give people one more minute here. All right. So it looks like mostly in the Ann Arbor area. Oh, yes, and outside the U.S. too. That's right. We have, uh, oh, great. Yeah, I should have had a world map up here. <laughs> Thank you for joining us from so far away. Okay. Well, I think we're just going to move right along. So um, I'm going to introduce our presenter today, um, Teresa Allen, as you know. She's been the technology teacher and coordinator for the Cathedral of St. Raymond School since 1999. So that's an early childhood to eighth grade Catholic school in Joliet, Illinois. She teaches students, teachers, and administrators various computer skills and projects. She is flat classroom certified and manages the DigiTeen, DigiTween project. She is also a global classroom project teacher mentor, a KidLink and iCollaboratory board member, and she hosts educator virtual PD sessions for her staff and educators worldwide. She is a global-minded um, collaborative educator and lifelong learner and she belongs to several global Skype chat groups and especially enjoys the Hello Little World Skypers, a group of over 200 educators worldwide who share, help, collaborate, and contribute to classroom and professional projects. Um, her Skype and Twitter ID is TDAllen5, and you'll see that at the end. Um, so without any further ado, I'm going to send it over to Teresa. Thank you so much, Liz. That was a great introduction. Um, and thank you for joining us today. Uh, right now it's about 8 o'clock in the morning, Joliet time, and I appreciate you coming at, at your specific times and hearing about the one computer classroom. Just as a, I want to do a little poll, uh, there's a green check mark and a red X. I just wanted to see um, by this poll uh, if you actually just have one computer in your classroom. So if you could use that green check um, or the red X. Uh, just to kind of see, uh, say thank you. All right. And then I think someone actually accidentally raised a hand. I think you wanted to do the green check mark or the red X. There you go. Okay. I'm going to put your hand down. Oops, there we go. Or did I raise my hand? I raised my hand. <laughs> okay. Um, excellent. So we've got. Um, some of you actually who have an, uh, one computer in your classroom. All right, um, I'm not sure, Liz, how to clear this um, poll. I'm wondering if you could help me do that. Uh, let's see, polling. I think I could do that. Mm. I, could show, I could do that. That's kind of cool. So it kind of shows you about half of us have and half of us don't. We'll just do another question real quick. How many of you have like a, um, a projector that will project anything onto your board? And you could change your answer by using a green check or red X. There we go. All right. So you, okay. So 
So many of you do. Excellent. Okay. So, whoops, I'm sorry. I think I just erased everybody. <laughs> I figured out how to do it. <laughs> All right. Um, so, great. So just, it was just curious because some of the things that I'm going to show you, you can actually use your projector with and some of them you don't really have to. So thank you so much for your um, polling. All right. So let's move on to the next one. There we go. So you have a computer in your room. Now what do you do? <laughs> so I just had a couple of images there. You know, you, you have one with a student, you have a laptop, and you have a little station. You could do that kind of thing. Um, but I have four things that I want to talk about today. And um, one thing is just how to maintain your computer, because I don't know if you have somebody that actually maintains it for you or that maybe you have responsibility to do it as well. And um, some things for just you uh, to do for yourself to, you know, better your um, education or better your um, your knowledge, your personal learning network, or whatever. Um, for that reason, something for both you and your students to do uh, to you know, learn about the world and, and get to, you know, learn other things as well, and something just for students. So that's kind of how I'm going to break it down today. So. Uh, if you have any questions throughout, you know, write it in the chat and I'll get to you. Also, I want to put, here's the link, I hope this works, um, the link to my presentation where all of the links will be. I'm going to try and share my screen as we go along to show you the different websites. I've got several websites I want to show you and you're probably at the end of this, you'll probably be a little overwhelmed at the number of things that I'm going to show you. So. Make sure you bookmark that, or um, if it doesn't work, let me know, and um, so you can, you know, get back to the, the things that I talked about today. All right, so the first thing we're going to talk about is maintenance. Um, I'm a PC user, so this is going to be a little bit PC heavy. I apologize, Mac um, users. Uh, many of these things can be used on the Mac, but, um, oh good, thank you. Um, but you can... I, you know, you, it'll be a little PC heavy, sorry about that. Um, so the first thing is Windows and Microsoft updates, of course, you know, this is a little more PC. If you have any updates, I would recommend you do all of, you know, the ones that are recommended. I sometimes do the ones that are suggested as well, uh, just to keep my computer updated. I'm a technology teacher, I have to take care of over 100, maybe 200 computers. And so I encourage, I show my teachers how to do this because I'm a, basically a one-man band in my school. I teach, I, I um, update computers, I do all the software and hardware. So it's a, it's a little easier when the teachers know what to do uh, for the most part so that, you know, I'm not running all around trying to do some updates and things like that. I did have something for Mac updates. Um, I'm not going to go to these sites on this page. I'm just going to talk a little bit about it, but the next um, slides I will. Um, then Adobe is, is important. If you have Adobe Reader, uh, you can read PDFs, which are like online documents, on, and, and you can read those, and you can download those, and, and print those. So that's really an important thing when you are going to certain sites and they have um, a PDF. And a PDF file is, is kind of like a Word document, but it's just, it's, readable for everybody as long as they have the tool to, you know, to download the certain um, feature. And then Flash and Shockwave, those two uh, from Adobe are, are important when your students are either playing games or you're doing a video or anything like that as well as Java, QuickTime, and Media Player, Real Player, actually the rest of them. Um, if you are showing anything on your screen and you need certain types of tools, usually um, Flash or Java are used, um, but I don't think that um, Macs have Flash and uh, you know, there's HTML5 as well. But uh, Windows Media Player, Real Player, those are things that, you know, if you're showing, let's say, a disk or something, you're showing something on a CD or DVD, those are uh, important things to have downloaded onto your computer. So these are links to get to certain things to uh, put onto your PC. Um, another set, and I'm going to show you these, are uh, File Hippo. I love this site. 
because it updates, it kind of checks what you need to have updated, and it will send you a little, there's like a little hippo at the bottom of your, like on your bar, and uh, you see these little eyes, and then when there's something that you need to update, it'll tell you, a little, little bubble will come up, and then you just update them. It's a very nice tool. Uh, these are what I have on my computers at school. Now, as well as malware bytes, that's kind of like a, a, a virus, uh, antivirus software, but it's, it's um, what malware is things that that c come into your computer and try to destroy certain parts of it. So you, you don't want that. Uh, CCleaner is nice because uh, this tool will clean out extra downloads or um, extra um, things that you really don't need on your computer and uh, any cache, any temporary files, you know, clean that out and um, then you, your, your computer can run faster. Uh, in PCs, there's defrag, so that's nice too. It's a, similar to the CCleaner, <coughs> but I seem to use CCleaner more than the defrag. And antivirus, I use AVG free. I don't pay for any antivirus tools. These are all free. Um, I, don't, I don't know um, if that is good, but I've been doing it for uh, 14, 15 years now. And um, my teachers mostly have been antivirus free. Um, I've had maybe two things that have happened, but they usually happen uh, when they are at home and they do something that they probably shouldn't have done. <laughs> so I'm going to try this um, uh, application sharing. So you can see, let's see, Google Chrome, yep, um, here we go. So. Uh, let me know if you can see this. I'm going to check my chat here. This is nice. Uh, this updated version is um, really cool because I can see the chat. Um, just type in the chat to let me know if you can see my screen. Yay. Okay. So File Hippo. This is my ultimate favorite site. Um, there's on the right hand side it says download your, your free update checker and scan your PC for the latest software updates. I, that's what I do. I download it and I get it to my um, hard drive. I have uh, a file in, in my um, on my desktop if I need to, or the link to the desktop. And it's really nice. It gives you updates on you know what kinds of uh, sites that or software that you can you can add to your uh, you know what other things that you can add. Uh, they, there's other antivirus. There's a vast. I've heard of that. I use AVG. Um, there's other types of tools like Google Chrome, which I use, and uh, Skype downloads, uh, Firefox, I use that as well. There's CCleaner. So, I mean, there's a lot of different uh, software tools that they suggest and they recommend, so it's kind of nice um, to have. I'm sorry if it's still loading. Um, I, all the links are on, my, on that um, slideshow for you, so just in case you can't see this very well. Um, malware, malware bytes. There, of course, is a free or a professional. I always do the free. And this is really nice because it detects any type of malware that's in your computer and takes care of it. And, um, you know, nine times out of 10, or even 9.9 .9 times out of 10, which is very helpful and it finds what I need. I've had my own children who have accidentally, you know, they, they might have uh, shared, a f had a file shared to them and accidentally brought something into their computer they shouldn't have. And I use malware bytes, and I've used AVG to take care of it, and, and it and it does take care of it very well. Uh, CCleaner, this is uh, what I, I download it from. I download CCleaner, and I can you can download it from File Hippo as well. And this is nice; it cleans out your computer for any extra files that you don't need, it makes your computer go faster. And notice that it's for PC or Mac, so that's nice. Um, Defrag. This is just uh, how to you know, defrag. I think this is for Windows 8 XP. Okay, so um, I I don't know after XP if it does defrag. If your computer does have a defrag function, but this kind of tells you how to do that. I don't do this anymore. I do CCleaner and uh, malware malware bytes in, also AVG. So AVG free um, is what I use, and uh, it it does everything except. Uh, you know, a couple specialized things that I really don't need, and I I find it very, very um, good. I I haven't, like I said, had many problems with it, 
and um, and I have to maintain over 200 computers, so it seems to work pretty well. So those are things about maintaining your computers. Any questions um, so far in regards to that? Great. All right. So I'll move on. Oh, um, do you take care of this? Actually, I have. Um, I try to have my teachers take care of it. So um, I haven't. I wanted to do a screencast of all of the things and how to download, but uh, I haven't done that yet. What I've done is I've written out all of the um, steps in, in order to download certain things and update certain things. Actually, not download, because they're all downloaded. It's just to update. And when you download these free tools, you will always see like something uh, like, hey, you can download this toolbar. I always uncheck that, because I don't need any of the extra stuff. I don't need, you know, sometimes the, if you're doing CCleaner, they'll say download Morton Antivirus. Well, I have AVG, so I don't need that. Uh, so I uncheck. So there are certain things that I try to tell the teachers and warn them about when they are updating, you, you want to make sure you uncheck this or check that. And um, if they can't do it, um, I, c I come to the room and take care of it. But for the most part, they are taking care of it themselves. So good question. OK, so um, the other things that I wanted to share with you, I'm just going to go to my page here, <laughs> is uh, for you, things for you that um, would be helpful. And they kind of mold into your, you and your students as well. But uh, if you have, haven't taken advantage of uh, Gmail, it's an amazing tool, it's a wonderful collaborative tool that um, connects you to other people literally around the world. So if you use Google Docs, if you use, like right now I have Google Presentation up, uh, you are, I'm sharing this with you. So you are, you're not in the same room with me and you can still see what I have. And I have it as a view only, but I could do uh, an edited version, and you can actually edit on here, and we can do this together. So I just had um, sixth grade yesterday in my room, and I heard a student go, hey, why are we doing this all separately? Let's do this together. And they started, you know, they shared it. They, they shared it with one another, and they started working on the same document together. And I did not teach them to do that. Uh, they just kind of knew. And I, I teach them more. In, did I say sixth grade? I teach them in sixth grade. It was a fifth grade that did that. But um, so it's really a great tool, and, and it's nice when you can't get together or if you want to share something. And uh, this is a great opportunity to do it together or at a different time. So that's that. Live binders. I want to show you live binders. I need to change here. I have different <laughs> different accounts so that I have all of these websites for you. Uh, live binders is wonderful. I have a bunch of live binders that I have made. Um, on my shelf here, but you can find other things as well. This is a great uh, source for you as an educator to uh, find resources. So I have, when I um, do global projects and we're on Edmodo or, or VoiceThread or anything like that, we use an avatar, the students use an avatar to represent themselves. And I have a live binder, and that's what this is, of all different types of avatars, uh, links, that I have found uh, that the students have used. And this is open for anybody to use and also to add to. And the kids love it, um, and the teachers will like it as well. It's a great place where you can find things that you know are all in one. So that I have, have uh, Creative Commons stuff. Uh, I have um, photos, like what how you can use photos online. And this is just my shelf. There's a, there's hundreds and thousands of other um, binders that you can actually take a look at and see, you know, maybe you're looking for um, PLN, Personal Learning Network, or you're looking for other things for the computer. Uh, this, this is a great tool to look for. Um, I'm sure that the recording will be um, located on the 4T uh, virtual, uh, there we go, thanks Liz. <laughs> Another thing, uh, and I think this is one of our sponsors as well, is Digo. And Digo is like a bookmarking tool where you can you can uh, have certain groups or you can have certain categories 
where you want to save websites or sh or save blogs or something like that. And this is just my um, place that I have my um, Digo bookmarks and things that I wanted to keep and, and share and um, and just have. And I and I when I ever whenever I um, find something on Digo, I have a website where it it keeps it in. Um, in sync as well, so I I always like this because I can you can do a search for a certain category. Let's say I want you know I have 218 sites that I've categorized as resources, and um, also related tags. Let's say you know if I Google Apps stuff, I've got great um, sites that I've found uh, about Google Apps. Um, or Google Hangouts are awesome. Didn't really talk about that yet, but. Um, different things about Google Hangouts, and they really—it's a really great uh, tool to, sh you know, you've got so much information. How do you, how do you find it all? And th these are good tools to have to find a resource and, and things like that. So that's Digo. I think there's another presenter that's talking about Twitter, and Twitter's a wonderful tool uh, to use. Um, I just days ago, I had fifth graders, I don't know if you can see this, but I used what's called group tweets, and they tweeted about uh, Mystery Skype that we were we were doing in my name. Um, I'm just learning how to do group tweet, but they actually tweeted about our um, our Mystery Skype on, online. So that's how I've used, um, one of the ways that I've used Twitter, but Twitter's a, an amazing um, tool to find information, to Connect with other other educators around the world, and uh, uh, just amazing way, and to just get connected. My husband has a Twitter account, but he just uses uses it to get information. You don't you can put information out, or you can and you can get information. It's up to you how you want to use it, but that's a good tool. Another tool that I, I like is called Simple um, K-12. This is a great tool to find webinars on certain things. You that you can get the free version, and you can just follow and uh, sign up for certain uh, webinars that they have throughout the year. They have certain days where they um, where they have one like the day of presenting, usually on Saturdays, and those are great webinars to learn about. Anything, blogging, classroom management, um, Common Core, so many different uh, things that iPads, <laughs> mobile learning, things like that. So um, amazing tool to use uh, for yourself, and just just to just to get some more information. You're, it's a free PD, or you can there's a paid version where you can get into anything and everything on the site. So um, another tool for yourself just to kind of learn more is Google and Education. Google uh, Apps for Education, they have uh, webinars as well. They have training. Uh, they have lesson plans. Uh, they talk about Chromebooks and um, any classroom videos that they share. Wonderful resources for the classroom, for you, and for students as well. So um, I've used um, Google um, for Education when I um, We've done webinars with them, and there's they have certain days too where they ha they share uh, Google Hangouts and, and webinars where you can get involved in kind of like this where you ask questions and and just kind of learn more professional development and it's free. I like that part. It's free. <laughs> uh, another place, and this is one of many. Uh, this is a Ning. This is called Classroom 2.0. Uh, this is a great resource for teachers to. Uh, it's a social network that kind of uh, helps you find things about technology or Web 2.0 tools or anything that you know you need help with regarding technology. And uh, this is basically where I, 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 one of the places I started three years ago, and I joined Classroom 2.0, and there are many webinars and learning resources for teachers. So it's a, it's a wonderful tool um, for teachers just to get some more professional development. This is interesting. I thought I'd add this in. This is called Log Me In, and Log Me In is a great tool, and I use this in school 
where um, you have remote access to computers. So you can put log me in at, on your home computer. So let's say you forgot a file or you had something that you know on your computer at home that you forgot to bring. This is this you can use log me in. Um, I use log me in for that reason and also I use it to remotely get into the teacher's computers to do any updates or whatever if I can't physically get to their computer I use log me in and it's a free tool um, and I use it with my parents as well they live a couple hours away from me and a couple times you know my dad will have some problems with he had a problem with Skype it wasn't working well it was because he was logged into the wrong account so I helped him with that and there's also um, you know I have helped other people as well just with little things it's a nice you, nice uh, tool and I believe that um, join me join dot me is also a tool and I don't have that on here but it's a part of um, of log me in where you can screen share and help each other you know or work on a project together that's another tool as well um, PBS teachers they have great resources for teachers as well as students for you, I started with some uh, classes actually on PBS Teacher Line, and learned a lot of things w regarding that. That was uh, that was a paid one, but um, the the PBS Learning Media that they have, um, you can you have um, some free access now, and I believe it will. Um, there might be a paid version as well. They're kind of changing this as as uh, time goes on, but wonderful resources for lesson plans and um, things that you can incorporate into your curriculum. So PBS Teachers is a great tool. And lastly for, for you, um, and as well as students, but for you for now, um, Edmodo, amazing tool for you uh, to connect with other teachers, to make a group and uh, you know to share information. And I use this with students. Uh, when I have homework and they can turn it into me in Edmodo and then I can grade it in Edmodo they get instant feedback instant you know as soon as I grade it they they get a, a notice that I've graded something you can have small groups where they can discuss certain um, uh, a book or, or or you can discuss certain topics you can widen the group and have a large group a worldwide group where they're sharing information and uh, and things like that. I, I'm sure that Edmodo is a, um, you might be uh, familiar with Edmodo. It looks like Meredith, you are, you, oh, yeah, there you go. So Meredith uses actually in, in, um, in her classes. So it's, it's a, a great tool even, even to find information. I've joined several groups. I've got like a social studies group. I've got a, um, a technology group, obviously, and they have resources beyond belief. And in there, in, in Moto, you can save it to your backpack, and you can, you know, there's there's ways that you can save what you find as well. So, um, yeah. So Liz is saying that the public school system uses it for pro professional networking and, and too. So even if you have just one computer in in your classroom, there, there, you have opened yourself up to the world. It's an amazing um, place. Of the internet, and there are so many tools and so many free tools for you to learn more for your students, for yourself, and you know, just to get the great greatest benefit of all. So that's that. Now let me move to my next page, <laughs> and that is um, for you and your. I think I'm on for you and your students. So I think, yeah, this is the one. Um, there's a number of tools that you can use for you and your students. Uh, one that I picked out was called Symbaloo, and Symbaloo you can there's there's several Symbaloos I guess uh, that you can uh, look for um, and find. Let's see if I can find anything real quick. Um, probably not right now, but uh, they, they have they have a lot of um, they, I can't show you, but they have these little buttons and they'll go to certain websites. So you've got this one page where you can put several resources on it. And uh, you can have several links on it. And uh, let's see if I can show you. PLE, here's another one. What was this one called? Student Uses. Um, Symbaloo as a personal, oh, it's going to be a video. We don't want to do that. <laughs> but um, there are de different, definite uh, uses for Symbaloo. Uh, you can have 
one page with a lot of resources, so I do like this. And for students, let's say that uh, you have all these cool math resources. You can link them all on Symbaloo, and all they have to do is click on whatever button, and they can go to that. Or, you know, I, I started doing this with uh, different grades, and I'm probably going to finish up as well with this, um, the Symbaloo with my students because I'm almost done with the school year. But all of my websites that I have done throughout the year, I'm going to put on one Symbaloo for them so that they can play over the summer. I, you know, my students have, I don't know if I can show you, um, I can show you later, but my students have a page where they go to their grade and then they find out what they're going to do for the day and I have links. So those links would be great to put on a symbolu and then they don't have to scroll down wherever and find everything that I've, I've put. They have it on one page and it's very easy. So I like that. Um, let's say you, now the next one is called Lino It, Lino. Um, let's say that you're starting a new, um, a new topic and you want to do some type of brainstorming, you know, see what they know, some prior knowledge. This is one tool, it's kind of like a, um, a, a board that, you know, you, you have in, in, your, in your room and you want to, like, you know, write down things that they know. They can actually, like, type in uh, th information. They could, uh, you can, like, a sticky note kind of thing. So it's nice for brainstorming. It's nice for... Um, you know, just kind of getting ideas. Maybe you're you want to see how much they've learned, and you want to put that in. You, know, you could do you could do something like that as well. There's a lot of sharing that you can do with it, um, and it's, it's a great tool just to collaborate and 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 get everything that you know the knowledge into one place. So let's say you have a test that you're going to give as well. This is a great tool too to see how what they know. Okay, tell me what you know, and then you, you can have them put their, you know, type their information in or they can shout it out and you can type it for them onto the computer. So, or as a homework assignment, you can do this if they have computers at home and say, all right, I want you to put five things that you know about uh, water pollution that we did last, this, this past week or something. So, um, great tool for you and your students to do some cool brainstorming. Uh, the next one is called Wordle. I don't know if you've heard of this, but um, this one is fun. You can take anything that you've typed, copy it, and make a make some type of a. Uh, it's called a wordle. I don't even know what to. Just a bunch of words in and uh, different colors, different formats. And if you have certain words that you writ, wrote more of, it, the word gets bigger. So if you see the examples that we have, the first one, the English is really big. So that means they use the word English lots of times. So just recently. The fifth and the third graders have used Wordles for their Mother's Day uh, letters. So they wrote a letter to their mom, and then they highlighted the letter, they typed, typed it up, and they highlighted it, and then copied it into a Wordle. And it, then they, um, you can see the, you know, if they have loving, loving shows up bigger. Uh, you can use different fonts and colors and backgrounds. And then we printed them out so that uh, they put it with their Mother's Day letter. And it's just a really neat tool to see, um, you know, how many times you use a word or just a beautiful way to present uh, a, a writing assignment. So it's fun for students. There's another one called Tagzido, T-A-X-E-D-O, I think. No, no, G-X. I'll have to find it. Tagzido, I think it's called. And that one actually puts it into a, like a, yeah, thank you, um, puts it into a shape. So if you want to make a heart or a tree or a hand, uh, you could do that as well. Wordle is just simple because it's in the cloud. I believe tags you have to download, so we don't we do not do that as much. We have Chromebooks at our school as well, so we can't download much onto it. So I try to find things that are all cloud-based that you can just get online. Um, this, for yourself as well as your, the students, we'll talk about that in a little bit. But this is how I started to blog. I I started blogging using the Teacher um, Blog Challenge through EduBlogs. And this is a self-paced challenge you can do anytime. I believe there are maybe 10 challenges. I can't remember now. I've done it. It's been three years. But a um, wonderful way to just figure out, okay, what kind of uh, blog do you want to do? Do you want to use Blogger? Do you want to use EduBlogs? Do you want to use uh, you know, WordPress or something like that? What do you, what do you want to do? How do you want to start? What do you want to write about? How often do you want to write? That kind of thing. You know, do you want your kids involved? So this is uh, was 
wonderful start for me to learn how to blog. And I commend EduBlog for their, their great tool and, um, and having this for students as well. So you can have your own challenge. It's self-paced. And, it's a, and there are people that are there for you um, for resources. And you know, this is something that you can start a blog. And you know, it's a great tool for parents. Uh, it's kind of like a newsletter. But also, they can comment and say different different things as well. You want to share something really cool that happened in class? Take a picture of some kind of uh, uh, assignment that the students did. You want to share it? Wonderful way to to kind of share, and you can you can share with other teachers around the world as well, and other students and other classrooms. So, great tool, EduBlogs. Um, iTunes is a good tool as well. You can find free podcasts on iTunes, music as well, but you, I think you have to pay for that. But there are podcasts that are free that you can download and you can use for your classroom, and for your students. So um, I haven't used this in a bit, but this is a, this is a good tool as well. Um, another couple of other resources when I was looking, I wanted to see if anybody had any activities for computers, you know, if you only have one computer in your classroom. And this is uh, alphabetically uh, 101 activities that you can do. I don't want to scroll too much. I don't want to mess up your page. But that you can, you have for, for your resources, wonderful things that you can do with your, with your computer in, in your classroom, even if there's just one. And another one as well. This is this is great. This one kind of puts it in categories. So, whole class activity ideas, time management, uh, scheduling. You know, if you want to have the kids come and do uh, certain rotating um, uh, assignments, and you want to have a couple at a time or one at a time, how to do that? Uh, any ways to use it as an instructional tool, and and good resources. So, that is. I think that's it for yeah. So that's for you and your students. So any questions um, about those resources? I know I'm going, I'm, try, I'm sorry if I'm talking too fast. I've got so much to share with you. OK. Great. I'll go to my last slide, which is for your students. And with that, i got to move to another account. <laughs> so um, these are some, some things that you can do for your students, and as well as, you know, yourself you can you can use these tools too but I kind of target it for the students so the first thing is Skype and I don't have um, a link for that but you know Skype in schools is a great resource Skype in the classroom is another great resource and just to download Skype I use Skype um, whenever I'm on the computer and I see you know I have Skype on right now but I put it on quiet mode <laughs> but um, I have uh, several groups in Skype that I communicate with and my students Use, uh, have used Skype too uh, to communicate with projects. So, and we've done mystery Skypes and other other things as well in Skype. So that should actually be for, and maybe I have it for for you as yeah I do, for you and your students. Um, let me move on to the next one. CNN uh, Student News, wonderful resource just to get uh, the latest in uh, world development. Mostly uh, we use it for United States. Um, things that are happening now. Uh, big tornadoes are uh, in, um, have have occurred. You know, we're hitting tornado season now, so there's some resources on that. Um, anything that uh, is related, you know, they they put it in student um, language, which is very nice for for um, probably uh, middle school. I would say sixth, seventh, eighth grade, and high school as well. Maybe even uh, fourth and fifth too, if you're if you're targeting certain areas. Um, QuietTube, this is something that I like to use with, uh, with my Google Chrome. And uh, it's a Chrome extension. And what it does, it just takes out the extra, what you want to call it, noise around, um, around videos. So you can just see the video that you want to see, not the extra stuff on the side and then the other stuff that pops up after a video. I really like QuietTube, especially if you're showing something on YouTube um, or even on uh, Vimeo. Um, so it, it quiets things down, it keeps the students focused, and then you don't get all scared and see any inappropriate things that are happening on the side or, or afterwards. So I, I really like QuietTube. So I, uh, the next one I want to show you is Kerpoof. I believe this is made by Disney. And uh, this is a great tool. I used this in 
preschool through third grade, and I've also used it with older kids uh, if they if they need to draw something. But this this the the students love to go on Kapoof to make a picture to spell a picture. Now, if you're doing spelling, I just had um, first grade. No kindergarten, kindergarten yesterday. Uh, I had a student that says, we have a really big spelling test tomorrow. Can I use Kerpoof to practice my spelling words? I said, yeah, definitely. So, you know, for her time that she had um, to, to play on the computer, she went to Kerpoof and practiced her spelling words. So in Spell a Picture, you, um, you, you type the word, and then if you have the word correct, a picture comes up to put in the background. So the kids love that. And older kids, third, third through um, third and fourth grade, like make a movie, and they actually make a, a movie. And they make people make objects move. They they make them say something with a little bubble. Uh, so they like that. We often use make a picture. So if we're drawing, we draw we drew portraits of other students in Romania and in Korea, and we got descriptions of them. So we had to draw a portrait. So we use make a picture to draw a portrait of them and uh, saved it. And when they have their own account, when you have a teacher account, you can actually save their stuff. And then they can comment and give each other stars. It's a, it's, it's a great tool uh, to use for that type of creativity. So I wanted to show you Kapoof. I like that. And I don't hear that that often, but I do like that site. Another neat site for um, digital storytelling is Little Bird Tales. The students can make their own little um, story, digital story, by adding some pictures and their own voice. Uh, and this is a wonderful tool. The kindergarten uses this tool a lot to make little books. Animoto, uh, this should be for both. I use Animoto a lot for my personal stuff as well as as, um, as, well as professional. Uh, this is just a nice tool, to, like a slide uh, slideshow. Put some music in the background, make it fade. Um, and Animoto has an educator account where you can get some more little little things than just a regular account. And Animoto is free for educators to, to use with that little extra stuff that they give you. But yes, it, it's a wonderful tool to use uh, to show slides. And if you're going a field trip and you want to put together, the, you know, you have the students put together things, or you know, to just download pictures and videos, and you've got you've got yourself a, a story. As well as another digital storytelling tool, we have VoiceThread. Uh, VoiceThread thread we use a lot in the, um, we use it in fifth grade and we use it in third and kindergarten. Uh, in fifth grade, we've used it to um, create, thank you Liz, um, to create global hero projects. And they, they research a hero, put their picture on, and then describe their hero. So we've, we've used that and we share that with other students in classrooms around the world. We also have used it in third grade to create um, a global project called A Week in the Life where they share, let's say their category is housing. So students all around the United States and the world share three to five pictures of houses in their area. And then you've got a whole story of different homes in the world. It's very nice. And then they use their voice to describe their the um, actual pictures. So those are great little storytelling tools. Uh, another thing I wanted to show you, we're talking about spelling in Kerpoof. Uh, spelling City, amazing tool for uh, students to practice their spelling vocabulary words. Uh, there's games and there's little tests that they can take. You you can actually have them take a test on this. Um, I've never done it that way. I've, I've just used the games and put the put the words in for the students to practice. And they've done it on their own as well. Uh, so they can practice that. Uh, they have programs that you can get involved in. And they also have their own um, lists that you can use as well. So wonderful tool to use. Um, free rice. This is a great uh, vocabulary game, I guess, but actually you do donate rice when you play this game. So this is we use this a lot in the upper grades where uh, for vocabulary you, there are different categories as well. You can do it in English or Spanish or different languages, different subjects here. Um, so we've got chemistry, we've got language arts, we've got math, we've got humanities, so science, great uh, vocabulary sites just to kind of learn um, 
different verbs or verbs, or different um, different words. <laughs> yes, and the kids, Josh, yes, the the ACT and test preparation, they've got it down here. Well, for SAT, but I thought they had ACT as well. You're probably using the same way. So great tool, and you're donating as well. Um, the student blogging challenge, I talked about the teacher blogging challenge. This is the student blogging challenge. And my fourth graders are doing this now. And I can show you really quick. Uh, there are 10 challenges. And these are the students that are participating this year in this this challenge. There's one in September, and then there's one in March. But different ages, it starts as young as seven. I'm sorry if this is going so fast on your screen. But I just want to show you um, all of the students that are involved in this. I think they go up to 18 or 19 years old. So, and they're split up in groups, and they have mentors, and we have different um, things that we have to blog about. And to comment, we go to different blogs to comment, how to properly comment, um, how to properly post, add a picture, things like that. So, great tool. And you can, this is just the, the student, but they have a classroom. Here, these are the classes. So, you don't, the students don't have to have individual blogs you can have a classroom blogging challenge. So these are classrooms that uh, are involved in the blogging challenge. So you know you have one blog, and it's for your class, and you, and you collaborate and communicate with that. So and do, do challenges with your, with your class instead of just with um, individual. So wonderful tool to use for your students as well as yourself. So. Okay, I think that's it. <laughs> and I need to get off of here. Let's see, tools, application sharing, um, uncheck. Am I back? I am. All right. So, oops, this is just a little bit about me. Um, my Twitter and Skype ID. It's my blog that I use to kind of talk about the things I do in my classroom and outside my classroom. And uh, different, different things that I've involved in with Black Classroom. With Kid Link Guys Collaboratory and the Global Classroom Project. And I also, I don't know if you can click on this. Um, you can on my page, but I flat my classroom with many global projects. And I, and I highlighted that, and I have a, um, a presentation on all the different global projects that I've been involved in that you're more than welcome to take a look at. That's a whole other um, session in itself. But thank you so much for joining um, me today, and I hope that I, you've gotten something out of this. <laughs> Um, and thanks again. Thanks so much, Teresa. Um, I know we have a couple extra minutes, so if anyone has any questions that they want to type into the chat, this would be a great time for that. Um, and also, I'm going to post the evaluation link in the chat room in just a second here. Um, and so please take a minute and give the presenters some feedback. That would be really great. Um, I know they always appreciate it. Oh, great. Here's some questions. Okay, so the question um, was, what is the most difficult part of the one computer classroom? I guess the most difficult part is to how to incorporate um, the computer into your classroom. You know, how do you use that thing that's sitting in the corner uh, to be part of your, your classroom? Um, I have had teachers that first thing in the morning, they have students go to the, to, to the computer and they're either blogging about something or they might start a station and they start their uh, projects on it. Um, we've also used the program Accelerated Reader where they take quizzes about books that they've read and so they have that open. Um, you know, it's, a, it's time management, I guess, is a big thing about having one computer. You know, what, what, what days and times would work for students to have it as, a, as just an open time to go to, to play games on and, and to, um, you know, do different things on that. When is a good time for you to go on and uh, learn about more resources and, and get some more information for yourself? I would say that's a good question. It's a difficult question to answer as well. Um, how do you manage student uses with, with just one classroom? So I don't have one computer. I used to have one computer in my classroom, and I would have a little schedule that I printed out, and I'd have times, and then one. And I have names on them. So, like, let's say Johnny's going first, and then Katie's going next. So, when Johnny's done, Kate, Johnny would go over to Katie, tap her shoulder, and then she knows to go to the computer. And we did this while during the day while I was teaching. So they'd be there for 15 minutes. They'd miss 15 minutes of something, but they'd still be involved in the classroom where they can 
you know, catch back up if needed. So I've done that during during the week. And like I said, I've had teachers that just first thing in the morning, uh, they might be doing their DOL and then some other kids are doing their um, doing their blogging or their daily five is another big thing that I've heard about. I am not familiar with the daily five, but they do have that where students use the computer to do that as well. Uh, Skyping, uh, we love to do mystery Skypes and uh, we just love to say hello to different classrooms and learn about what's your favorite food and what's your favorite color and you know um, what's the temperature there, what's the time there, uh, why are you wearing uniforms, <laughs> things like that. Um, so we use it for Skyping and for hang Google Hangouts as well quite often. Um, the group that I talked about, the um, yeah, Daily Five is great. The group that I talked about, the Hello Little World Skypers group, I have over 200 teachers that if, if any, let's say I'm, I'm looking for somebody to Skype with, I'll say, hey, is anybody around to Skype uh, to talk about this? Or they m I might even ask, do you know somebody who who has worked on um, uh, the outside, let's say we're talking about different types of grasses, do you know any farmers, do you know any um, people that are familiar with that? It, it, it's unbelievable the, the, um, the amount of people that can connect you to something and uh, firefighters or um, astronauts, uh, we've been involved in that as well. So, you know, you can use that one little computer sitting there for so many different resources. Live Binder. Um, do I use Live Binder to organize all of these sites? Um, <laughs> I I don't think I have a Live Binder of my resources, but there are several. Um, I just I, I just use, well, I use Deagle a lot more as well. It's like I'll find something and I'll categorize it. That one's a little bit easier for me to do. But uh, if I'm doing a live binder or a Symbolu, it's specific for like students or for like some, um, mostly for students. So I have an avatar live binder. I have a Symbolu for certain grades uh, so that they can go to different places. So you can, on your one computer, you can put up a live binder, you can put up a Symbolu so they know what to play. So that's some good questions. And thank you. The next question, um, are there any activities you could recommend if you don't have internet access? Oh, that's good. Um, yes, um, you can, well, you'll have to purchase certain software items. Um, I don't know if that's what you're asking. Uh, we've used um, different, different things that we purchased right off the top of my head. I know we've used some typing ones called type to learn. Um, I use Sansmet typing online though. Um, but the type to learn we've used. Oh, Kid Picks. That one the kids love. Kid Picks. Um, uh, type to learn. These are things that you would have to purchase a, a disc. Um, and I'm trying to think if there's any others not off the top of my head, but those two are the big ones that we have we have um, done in the past. Kid Fix is like that uh, Kerpoof where they draw certain things and this kind of a creative tool, type to learn is typing. Um, of course you can use Word or PowerPoint um, or um, Paint. Uh, those you don't need internet access uh, for uh, your computer. But as re in regards to games, there are, there are discs that you can buy. So thank you for that question. Um, if anyone has any final questions, go ahead and type them in now. And I'm also going to, I tried to post the link earlier, but hopefully now it will work. Um, this is the link to the evaluation so that you can uh, say what you thought about the session or what you might like to see in the future at future 4D conferences. Um, so we'll keep the room open in case anyone wants to type in any more questions. But otherwise, um, thank you for attending the session of the virtual conference. And the recording should be posted on the website over the next week. And thanks again, Teresa. It was so helpful. Really cool session. Thanks for having me. And have a great uh, weekend.